We often take the things we use every day for granted. We use them and we expect them to work. That's because they're tested many, many times before we even see them. Would you ride in a car that had only been tested once? Probably wouldn't work so well. How about a toaster? They're not so good either. Now what about a satellite? The same thing applies. What if we had a telescope that couldn't take pictures? Luckily, NASA was able to put glasses on Hubble, but it's not always so easy. That's why engineers do their best to make sure things work right and will keep working for a long time. And how do you design something that can do the same thing over and over and over again? You test it. Before we start testing, though, we should make sure we know a little bit about our mission. That way, we can figure out what we're testing as well as what we're allowed to do to improve it. These are called constraints. Constraints help engineers get a good idea of where to start. For example, we probably wouldn't want to build a lunar lander out of, well, let's say, bricks. Actually, let's use that example. We need to land humans on the moon. We have a design for a lunar lander, and it has to land safely from the same height each time. We also have to be able to reuse it. So let's try it out. Well, that didn't work. Good thing we're just testing. Let's try it again, but let's think about how we can make it better. Maybe some legs. Close, but how can we keep it from tipping over at all? Maybe some rockets to help guide it down. Great. Now maybe you were wondering what the letter N was doing up in the corner. Put simply, N is a variable. Scientists and engineers use this variable to represent the number of times we've tested something. In our example, we've tested our design three times. So N equals three. Luckily, we came up with a good solution. Some designs need to be tested hundreds of times before they work. But that's okay in the end. All this repetition will lead to success. And NASA knows this better than anyone.